Hey, g'day, it's Prezo here. It's a beautiful sunny winter's day here on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland. How are you? Thanks for dropping by. Let's take a look in the garage though. Now, just so you know, I'm still working on this project. This is the wood to metal bandsaw conversion. And the videos I've done on this in the past have generated a lot of interest and I haven't uh, lost track of it. I'm still working on it. I'm waiting on a couple of parts to turn up and then we can do the full Gotts winter. That means we're gonna reassemble it and turn a sow's ear into a silk purse. <laughs> That's the expression, isn't it? So we're gonna get to that in the next video, but today I wanna talk about this. Now this is a UB100 or a Universal Bender 100 and let's have a closer look. Okay, this uh, video is about this particular machine and it came out of a previous video that I'd done and somebody named Jim Pritz had seen this on the bench and asked me a question about it. And the question relates to these two mystery items. Now let's cue some spooky music. And, well, here's the truth. I used one of these many years ago when I was a teacher in a secondary school here in Queensland. My friend bought one and I subsequently bought one as well and so did Jim evidently. And when we were using this at school, we were just using it to bend uh, flat stock and bar stock and round stock and angle and it did that really well. And these two items here came with it and they just got stuck in the cupboard and nobody really knew what they were for. Uh, my friend asked me a while ago if I knew what they were for, and I said, not really, but I'll find out. And I went home. First thing I did was uh, download the instruction manual. Now, I did get this with the machine, but like most instruction manuals, you know, I'm a man. Who reads those? <laughs> it just went into the file. But I got it out again, and I had a quick look, and uh, this is it. It's uh, like three pages, and it sort of shows you all of the items that you get with the bender. And it includes this one here, which it just uh, calls a bending eccentric seat. Who knows what that means? And this one, this is the other mystery part called a bending die plate. Now it actually does come with two of these bending die plates. Uh, this being the, the one that nobody seems to know anything about. And uh, then I went, so, okay, where's the rest of the pages? No, that's it. So no uh, information on what you're meant to use this for or this one. So I thought, that's all right, I'll go to YouTube. Somebody will have done a video showing what these things are for. I could only find two videos on this particular machine. Uh, one which came from the site where I bought this. The other one looked like it was uh, Russian or Ukrainian. And they did everything with this bender except show, show what this thing is for. They show putting it on, like replacing this uh, die here, but then that, that's where the video cut out. And it's almost like they said, well, we don't know what it's for either, so we'll just leave it out. Now, when Jim got in touch with me, he was baffled as well, and I thought, well, it can't be that hard to work out. So I put it on the machine, and I just sort of thought around the idea of what it might be used for, and I'll show you what I think it's meant to do. Just before I change out this eccentric and put the mystery part on, um, I just thought I'd show you what it can do, and this is what we used it for mainly when I was teaching. So this is some uh, 10 by three or 10 by four millimeter hot roll steel, and it can be clamped with that eccentric block. Uh, there is a stop here that if you want to do repeatable bends as well. And this little um, flappy bit at the back here can be adjusted up so that it's snug against the back of that steel strip. And then you just simply pull that around to a 90 degree angle. There's a series of stops uh, which you can set up with this adjustable uh, screw here. So you can get repeatable 90 degree bends. And these die plates can be reversed or swapped out. Uh, so it comes with these which you've got you know, a variety of different profiles, rounds on the edge. Uh, there's also one that will do round stock. Uh, it's got a V in it. I haven't got that here at the moment. But I'll just show you the different effects you can, you can get with it.
Đấy rồi. Okay, so we got that clamp. Pull that around the same way. Okay, so you can get 90 degree bends with the, the big radius on the corner like that. Now, this will also bend, you know, round stock. It'll take material up to around about 16 millimeters if you're really strong. And that's bending cold. Uh, if you want to heat this up, you can get even thicker sections in there. So let's try a bit of this uh, 10 millimeter hot rolled round. And that's just gripping it there. So, so that sort of bends quite easy. So for a, you know, a bench mounted machine, I find this thing's really handy uh, for cold bending. And I don't have oxyacetylene equipment that allows me to get stuff really hot for, uh, for bending over uh, mandrels and that sort of thing. So for cold bending, this is great. Anyway, let's have a look at this, uh, this mystery part. So the way this works, take that die block off, you put the mystery block on like that and I'm going to swap back to the sharp bend okay what do I do with that there it is Okay, so we got that. So what we're gonna do now is we'll just make a 90 degree bend like we did before. Works exactly the same way. Okay, so 90 degree bend. So I got that. Now you can bend a Z, or what I used to call a joggle. So a joggle is like a 90 degree bend to the right, and then another 90 degree bend going the opposite way back to the left. And the way you do that is you put it into this slot. Now I'll bring the camera around so you can see better. Okay, I'm gonna try and do this by hand so you get a better look. So what we do is put the stock down inside, but this time I'll bring it over a little bit. So you can see it clamped against this die plate here. This time it's right over against the, the back side of this slot. And I've got this plate here sort of nipped up so it's tight against the front of the stock. Okay, and we just bring that around. Now, I did, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> I should have been able to get both hands on this. I need to be able to hold that as I swing that handle around. Okay, I think that's worked. So there's our joggle. Could have come around a bit further, but you get the idea. All right, well that sort of brings us to the, the next mystery part, which is this one. And it's a direct replacement for this uh, plate here. So all we do is pull that pin out, slip that one out, and put that one back in there as a replacement. And it pretty much functions in the same way. So let's try doing another bend. So let's try doing some round stock this time. And I'm going to swap out to this eccentric block here.
Okay, so I've got a bit of round stock in there now. Let's do the, a 90 degree bend with that one. Okay, now you can turn that over and put it on top. And that sort of fits uh, behind this vertical projection here. And you can just re repeat that process, bend it again at 90 degrees. Let me just bring that up a little bit. Okay, come around. And you get essentially a similar thing to what we got with the, the other block with the groove in it. Now there's a limit to how thick your material or how vertically thick your material can be when you use this block here. But for that 10 millimeter bar and probably up to about 12 millimeter, it would work perfectly. So that's what I think that those two mystery parts are used for. If anybody knows differently, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. I'm sure lots of other people would too, because trust me, the, uh, <laughs> the instructions you get with this thing are pretty scarce. There's not a lot of information in there and certainly there's not much online. But yeah, that's, that's my best guess. Now, one other thing I should mention, uh, this handle when it came with the machine had two drilled holes in it and had two hex headed bolts. And if you want to remove the handle, which I do for storage because this is my welding bench, uh, it's also like a general fabrication area. And having this handle here across the side of the bench is a real nuisance, it sort of gets in the way. So I like to remove the handle and store it out of the way when I'm not using this machine. Now when it had the hex headed uh, bolts there, you needed to find the correct spanner. You had to undo the hex headed bolt completely, complete with its washer and spring washer. You had to do that twice, store those somewhere or put them back in the threaded holes and then you could put the handle away uh, out, of the, out of reach somewhere. Then uh, I got fed up with doing that quite honestly. Uh, I'd almost you know, not do a job with this machine because I just hated the thought of having to go through that rigmarole every time. And I was watching a post by uh, Tom Lipton uh, at Ox Tools and he was uh, showing one of these little double-ended Allen keys or hex wrenches. And he made one for a, a vice that he had, uh, um, like a machine vice. The one that he made was uh, much longer than what I've got and uh, for smaller size hex keys, but the principle is the same. And he made his out of uh, stainless steel. He TIG welded the joint, the T-joint here. Now I don't do any TIG welding, so uh, I just simply machined this out of mild steel. The crossbar is pinned in place and the two hex uh, sections are silver soldered into holes in either end. So the way this works is you can use it like a normal Allen key or a hex wrench and get you know a bit of torque on that if you really want to tighten that down. And if you want to completely remove that uh, socket headed screw you just spin it by the top and the little T-bar there acts like a bit of a flywheel. Now remember that the whole reason for doing this was that I didn't want to completely remove these screws. So what I can do is just loosen them slightly and then the whole handle just slides out. Now I modified this handle by slotting out that uh, U-section there with an angle grinder and uh, these screws have captive, cap, uh, captive washers on them. So um, these are steel, I think. Are they steel? Yeah, these are steel. And I threaded them and then threaded the socket-headed screw down through this section here. So they're more or less permanent. And that way you don't need to completely remove anything. It's just a very quick operation to clamp the handle in there or remove it. And when I first thought about doing this I was worried that that uh, u-shaped slot would allow the handle to spread you know if you really you know wrench it around hard but there's a pocket 
in here. I don't know if you can see that. So there is a, a pocket in there so that when you slide the handle in, it's sort of constrained by that pocket. And when you clamp these down hard, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. All right? There's no chance that that's going to spread completely open. So the, uh, the bigger hex here is for that one bolt in the front, which allows you to change out these die plates. So the whole thing has been powder coated in yellow. That's just simply so I don't lose it amongst all the junk on my bench. And uh, it does a pretty good job. So that's it. That's the UB100. I'm not sure. I think the 100, the UB stands for Universal Bender. And I think the 100 refers to the height of that block there. I think it's 100 millimeters high. So that's it. That's the UB100. That's the, the mystery part, which I'm hoping <laughs> I've described accurately. I think I've sort of explain what that is for. Still not really sure what this is for. Um, once again, if anybody knows, be glad to hear about it. And uh, this is the other little plate which allows you to do those interesting little bends, joggles. Okay, that's all for now. Uh, check the next video. It's going to be about the bandsaw going together. Lots of interesting processes went on there and uh, lots of finishing processes, which is what's delayed the whole thing. But we'll have a look at that in the next episode. Good on you. See you next time.